Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, I'll give you all an introduction to Avro by covering what is Avro and why Avro makes sense for exchanging data between systems. This is going to be a theory lecture to get us started with Avro. Avro is a data serialization system and it helps to exchange data between systems in a binary serialization format. Avro is a compact and a fast binary data format. Some of the benefits with it are it takes less space and it also has a direct advantage of taking up less memory and it also speeds up the transfer of data. It also has a support for most of the programming languages such as Java, C Sharp, Go, Python and more. And Avro as a system has the capability of making a remote procedure call but this feature is not needed for the scope of this course but I feel like it's still worth mentioning it. Now in this slide, I'm going to talk about uh, why Avro. As I mentioned before, Avro has a support for schema interface definition language. This means the data owner defines a schema in JSON format for the data structure that they would like to communicate to the other system. Let me quickly show you how it works in action. The producer in this case is the data owner and the team will create a schema and then share it to the consumer team through a common interface such as schema registry. And then the consumer can read the schema first and then expects the data to be in the same format. So with this architecture, the producer will always make sure it produces the fixed data structure based on the schema because if the schema doesn't match, the producer will not be able to publish that record into the Kafka topic. This architecture also makes the data evolution and schema changes fairly less complicated. I'll talk about the data evolution and schema changes as part of a different section. But for now, I hope you are able to visualize the concept of schema, schema registry and how it works in action. One quick thing to call out is that we can also publish and consume Avro records without the schema registry. I'll show you an example of how to do it when we get to the coding part. So another important reason why Avro is very popular is because of the support of the rich data structures. It pretty much has a support for all the possible primitive types that are available in software. One thing to call out here is that string is considered as a primitive in Avro. And these are the different complex types that are supported in Avro. First three enum, arrays and maps are pretty much the standard. The fourth one is a record which is a special one in Avro. This type is normally used to hold or represent multiple complex type. Any time we define a schema, it will be of this type. Basically, this type can hold multiple complex types. So here is an example of a schema and how that would look. You may be able to notice that the schema is defined in the JSON format, which is really nice because JSON is something which everyone is most comfortable to work with. So you define a schema with a type as record and in the field section, we provide all the different fields the data structure is going to hold. In this example, we just have a simple type string and just one field as part of the schema. But in reality, the number of fields and the different types a schema can hold will be much bigger. Don't worry too much about the details in this schema. We will learn more about writing these schemas as we go further in the course. The next new type in Avro is the union type. This can be used to represent a particular field can hold multiple types. In this example, a particular field can be a string or a null. Basically, this type is used to represent an optional element. And the next new type is fixed. This is used to represent a field of fixed size, which specifies the number of bytes of the value. If we have experience working with hashing algorithms, the output will always be of specific size of bytes. And you can use a fixed type for that. In my experience, I have not used this type at all, but it's there just in case if you have a use case for fixed size of bytes. The support for rich data structures is also one of the reasons why Avro is popular over other formats. I hope you all have a good understanding of what Avro is and why Avro is the most popular choice in working with Kafka and Schema Registry. In the following lectures, we'll start doing a lot of hands-on to get yourself comfortable working with Avro. With this, we came to the end of this lecture. Thank you for watching.